Kennedy at the dog on Pops on the Hill, and Mike his uh, steak, pretty partial to steak. Mike, what do you got going today? Uh, today is gonna be a London broil. Uh, right now I'm searing it, and then it's gonna have some garlic, onions, uh, uh, onion soup mix, that kind of thing, and then it bakes for a couple hours. Or I'm gonna have to speed it up because we're pressing for time. Awesome, yeah. yeah. Yeah, truth be told, on the way here, I typed it into the GPS for my first time, and uh, I was supposed to take a right onto Glastonbury Ferry Road, and I took the turn, and lo and behold, there was no road. There was actually a ferry, so we were a little delayed, so I think we're all rushing. That Mike, poor Mike had a trailer, as you can see, and uh, he couldn't take the ferry, so he had to go the long way around. That happened to me. So, uh, so anyway, beautiful ferry ride if you're in the area. And this is the maiden voyage of this. This, this is amazing. Yeah, talk, talk to me about this. This is great. Well, so we saw your cook box last time and it yeah. fits pretty well. Cook box is a few years old from Scouts. Uh, I had all the parts laying around, so we decided to build a trailer and it's working in the makings. There's a hot water heater solar system going on it with electrical system and a water, water tank, waste tank, and a four bay sink. Okay. And so you throw all your gear in there, yep. the cook box go in the, in the big hopper as well, or do you? Well, I actually got a lift that goes on on this in order to pick up my Dutch because the 20 inches weigh 60 pounds right. and you can't really reach it. So I have a lift that picks it up from here and puts it on the table. Awesome. Yeah. So, awesome, awesome. But I still working in, working in the makings. Yeah. So. Great. All right, now I'm here with John Norcross at the dog, and he's got some butter that he's melting. What are you gonna make with that, John? All right, the butter's going into the batter for the apple vanilla cream cheese cobbler. Ooh, cream cheese cobbler. Yep, Excellent. and then uh, I have to do it again for another part of it, so I'll be melting a lot of butter. And then what's in the 14 inch here are four uh, pork loin roasts stuffed with apples, uh, spices, uh, a little bit of hard cider, a little bit of cinnamon whiskey. Oh, game on. I got, and they're, I got they're, a whole pork wine going as and well. They're going on top of a bed of uh, Granny Smith apples. Awesome. So uh, Your dishes can be better than mine. <laughs> I'm doing the drunken pork chop, so I've got them on onions yep. with the ketchup. And then and I, uh, I did boneless chops just for convenience yep. today. Yep. So uh, looking forward to those as well. So, um, man, I, I love this table. This table is just something else. And it's been standing up well. It looks like it's been treating well. Yeah, I gave, the, I, gave, I, gave, I gave the deck a uh, fresh coat of paint this spring because uh, it was a little scorched from use, yeah. but um, that's it. Hey everyone, I'm here with Jennifer today. Jennifer actually helped us organize this dog. She helped put it together, so we're very thankful for her. Jennifer, what are you making today? I'm cooking today for the very first time at a dog, so it's a uh, little uh, new for me. I'm gonna make some uh, roasted pink potatoes with roasted peppers and Vidalia onion. And I've got some shrimp with a uh, honey ginger uh, garlic sauce. Oh, I can't wait so for I'm that. So I'm gonna try that too. Shrimp and, is a little, uh, a little different than what you're gonna find at the dog. Yeah, you know, a lot of, yeah. lot of stews. Yeah, a lot um, of stews, chilies, breads. Awesome. But I'm cooking with uh, skillets, cast iron skillets instead of a Dutch oven uh, okay. kettle. Excellent. Well, it's all about the camaraderie. So, you know, um, I'm really happy to have Jennifer here cooking for the first time. And, you know, come on down and just experience one of these things. And before you know it, we'll have you hooked. So, great. Thanks, Jen. Jumping in. Thank you. I'm actually here with Carl. Usually at these Dutch oven gatherings, he's running around like a maniac. And uh, he's actually set up a, a pretty nice base camp here, actually. I'm so excited to actually talk to Carl during one of these dogs. Carl, we've got some friends here, um, Tim and his lovely wife. And uh, tell us what you got going. So, you know, I figured we're at a brewery and uh, everybody always thinks our water heater looks like a still. So I figured why not bring it out? Theme. Keep with the theme and also uh, got a fire stand, go tripod going there and over to the fire I've got some sauerkraut cooking. Down here I've got it's fall here in New England and what would be better than cooking with some apples. So instead of pineapple upside down cake, I have an apple upside down cake and got some nice big apple rings at the bottom. All the normal way you'd make a pineapple upside down cake, like the one we make on the videos, just, use an just using apples and instead of uh, using pineapple juice, in the cake mix, I used apple cider. And I had a lot of little bits of apple that I stirred. 
and put inside the cake mix. So we'll see how that comes out. It's just about done. Can you see? Looks phenomenal. Are we doing okay from a skilled Dutch oven chef? Pretty darn good. <laughs> we're we're going to make Tim the referee for the day. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. I'm here with Tom, Deb, and Mike. Who's Mike? I am, I'm their son. All oh, right. Okay. I thought maybe you just picked him up hitchhiking or something. Because I mean, he had some muscles. So, you know, cast iron's heavy. So, it is. Uh, absolutely love Tom and Deb. They're at our very first dog. They were at the second dog, and they're here at the third dog. And to boot, they're Bills fans. What's That's right. Go Bills. Go Bills. All right. Go what do you guys got cooking today? Well, we've got the world's best Dutch oven gourmet ribs going right now. Awesome. The world's best. World's best. No pressure. No pressure. All right. No pressure at all. <laughs> I'm sure they're going to be awesome. Um, and so what, what goes into it? Onion, pepper? Yeah, uh, we um, take um, peppers, slice them into ringlets, about an inch and a half. I mean, uh, about a three quarters an inch thick. And uh, take out the core and uh, lay, lay circles out. Then we took um, onion, did the same thing, about a three quarter inch ringlets and then um, use as much garlic as you need oh i love garlic got garlic you love garlic Gar garlic i got the hat baby. there's no such thing as too much garlic so uh crush crush a bunch of garlic put it in the bottom and um the with the uh apple theme uh we don't waste anything in new england i just took out the core and put it in skin and all in the bottom and uh of course you gotta have hops on the hill wonderful wonderful porter um, yeah, I, this is a really good porter. Yeah, uh, honestly, Hops on the Hill, thank you so much for hosting this. Um, the facility is amazing. The grounds are great, and the tap room is off the hook. I mean, ridiculously nice. And, um, you know, the beer is actually really, really good, too. So I'm in a happy, happy place. <laughs> Bought a four-pack of the porter, and we only needed one can, so... <laughs> Uh, actually, truth be told, I asked my wife to give me two Oktoberfest for my dish. I really only needed one. And I had one in my hand when I sent there, so I thinking ahead. Well, you did need them both. <laughs> so then, um, so what we did is we took honey mustard and covered the ribs with it, take the uh, membrane off. And uh, then you, uh, after you've covered that with the uh, honey mustard, gives uh, Tom Stauffer's gourmet pig dust, gives it something to stick to. Then you lay that out in the oven, and then Mike made a uh, fantastic. You may want to dip your finger and try yeah, that. Okay. So yeah, go for it. Wash like my the finger today. It, Mike? What is it's it? a Memphis Smokehouse Barbecue. Homemade. He created it. It's good. So tomato base. Yes. Um, definitely spicy. Little heat in the back at the end. So what's your, oh, it's a secret, you're not gonna tell us. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll divulge a little bit. I use a little bit of Chipotle, mostly for the smoky, and a little bit of the back heat. Um, there's a little bit of cayenne in one of the blends that I added in there too. Uh, I keep getting a little heat, heat. it's yeah. really good. Really, and there's really some good. black pepper to make the heat stay a little bit, and then I did a little bit of cinnamon just to make the heat seem like it was more up front and then fade away quickly. But you know what's nice? So many people just put so much hot stuff in their sauces that you can't taste what it's on. Right. That's not going to steal the show. It's just going to complement everything really, really nicely. That's I designed really it specifically to be on ribs. Awesome. Let the ribs be the star of the show and the sauce is there to support. And I am partial to ribs, so I will be back. I've been telling everybody I'm going to be front in line to get your dish. I'm not lying. I'm going to gonna be in front in line. I'm going to be knocking down women and children. If I, uh, and you uh, have a bottle for John, right, you said? Oh, sorry, for all Mike. your thank, for, as a thank you for everything you've done, I uh, really enjoy, uh, really awesome. enjoy your uh, YouTube channel. Excellent. And uh, Grub Masters has its very own pig dust to try. Excellent, thank you. I can so, definitely try these on some ribs at home. All right, all right, smoker coming for you. I'm here with Michael. Michael. What are you making today? Uh, today I'm making uh, mac and cheese. I'm actually, I cooked the noodles and then I kind of layered it up with the cheese. Kind of like you make a lasagna. It goes like noodles, cheese, noodles, cheese. Nice. And uh, I'm gonna put some bacon on top of it because bacon makes it better. And I saw you pour some wet stuff on there. What was that all about? Yeah, it was um, whole milk, uh, eggs, sugar, salt, uh, just to uh, get it a little more cheesy, kind of spread it out because it was, uh, Kind of like making more of a sauce. It's going to be pretty much like a decadent Dutch it's oven. It's going to be heavy. 
Yeah, it's gonna be heavy. I think there was like, I, I think I saw like six pounds of cheese on the table. No, got four or five different cheeses. So it's like 10 pound mac and cheese. It's a heavy, it's a heavy Dutch oven. Yeah, we're doing a 14 inch deep and uh, it pretty well filled it. I do believe this is Christian's first dog. Christian? It is my first dog. My brother got me a Dutch oven and a chimney and a few other things for my birthday last month. You know, and we actually, this is a here we are. Deep. Yep. We call this the gateway Dutch oven because once you get this one, you just want more and more and more. <laughs> what are you yeah. cooking today? So it's very simple for my first time. It's just potatoes, carrots, onions, um, chicken, all seasoned up really good. That's Great. it. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, looks like you get a nice little rig set up here. And yeah. uh, I look forward to uh, seeing your meal once it's all done. All right. Thank Thanks. You. Welcome everybody and thank you everybody who came out today. It's just great to be able to have this space and to bring everybody together and share this fun that we have for Dutch Oven cooking. For those that aren't familiar, Dutch Oven Gathering is a gathering where everybody comes together. There is no planning. It's very organic. You just show up and we could end up with 20 chilies or 20 cakes. Uh, it's just, but it always ends up being a good mix of food uh, without any planning at all. So utensils are on this end. There's no rhyme or reason to the way the food is laid out. Um, so uh, figure it out as you go around and uh, come on up and enjoy.